Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with MysticGenMara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And tonight, today, whenever you happen to see this, I would like to offer the monthly elemental energy reading for Earth for September of 2024. Earth covers the zodiac signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And if you're interested as to why I read for the elements instead of the zodiac, you can find excuse me, you can find out why, more about that out in the videos linked below. All of the decks and the I Ching and things like that that I use are also linked down below. And if you're not sure what your elemental alignment is or where that all fits in, there is a natal chart. It's not a um, promotion or anything that I'm doing. It's just uh, a really good product and they give you your basic natal chart with the 12 houses and all the little planets and everything depending on what's there and then there's like a 10 to 20 page description of what's in that what does it mean as a baseline and it gives you all the elemental information as well so it's a pretty good resource and it's it's surprisingly accurate when you start going through it because you're like wow that's actually way too close to how I really am and it's <laughs> it's just a basic one but it's still there's a lot of good baseline information in there but with that we will get started with our reading and we start with the I Ching and I cast the hexagram before we start the videos so your earth hexagram for September is number 48 and it is a well And the text is a well a city may be a city may be moved but not a well a well suffers from no decrease and no increase but often when the people come to draw water the rope is too short and or the pitcher gets broken before reaching the water misfortune so September could be <laughs> a little bit interesting for our earth family here our base our foundational line right oops there right down here on the bottom the muddy water at the well bottom is undrinkable and old well attracts no animals. If things are looking not so great to start off the month, it's best to just be calm and find a balance. Let the water settle. And when it says an old well attracts no animals, if it's starting to get mold or algae or something in it, your animals aren't going to want to go to that. So this is one of those times where let the water settle let the let whatever's going on in your life settle down and then clean up what's causing the problem that may not be an easy thing to see but we'll see if there's a hope at the end of the tunnel here so our second line is perch dart from the water in the well hole the pitcher is worn out and leaks this is really saying the like perch it's a fi they're talking fish here so there's still some life within the well but there's not a lot to draw from and what I'm hearing with that is this is a t great time to do some self-care September for Earth is looking so far like things have been stirred up for a while you may not be in the spot where you would prefer to be this is a good time to just take a break you can't pour from an empty cup you're you've been doing a lot for yourself for other people this month is less about pursuing and more about allowing yourself to recover type of an energy uh, our third line here the well has been cleaned out to my heart's sorrow no one drinks from it though it could be well used to supply drinking water the king is wise and it is possible for the people to share his good fortune so you've been doing the work you've been doing the things you've been doing the spiritual work the physical work working towards your goals and now it's time to kind of take a breath, chill out. And they're saying that this is about halfway through the month. You're going to have noticed that things are cleared up, but you're also not in the public's eye, so to speak. No one's really paying attention to you. You've done all this hard work. You've done all these things, and no one really cares. And the point here is, is the king is wise, and it is possible for the people to share his good fortunes, is saying... You've done the things. Why are you worried about what other people think? 
you've been clearing things up. You've been doing the self-care, especially the first part of the month is what they're saying, to kind of sort through what is going on. And now that you are in a better place, you're like, well, so I did that just for me? Yeah, you did, because that's your fortune. Uh, your fourth place line, well, it is being tiled, so no error. The well being tiled means it's being reset. You have been, re you're working on resetting yourself. You're setting yourself up for success. You've taken the time to sort through whatever uh, energy, whatever thing was coming up that was kind of like eating at the back of your awareness, like, eh, something's just not feeling right. And at the first of the month, they're saying, this is the time to do it. The middle of the month is when you're like, okay, so that's handled. And by towards the end of the month, you're tiling the well, you're clearing up the well, you're also working to prevent that from happening again. So you're moving forward in a healthy place here. The fifth place line, the well is cool, it's water tastes like water from an icy spring. You've do, you're doing the work, therefore you're cleaning things up, and by the end of the month, you're feeling refreshed, you're feeling better, and things are starting to, the, <laughs> the stars are shining on you, things are looking up, this is just like a good time by the end of the month. It's not going to start off so great, but by the end of the month, things are going to improve. In our capstone here, the well rope lies unconcealed, confidence and supreme good fortune. Do the work this month, Earth. Do that first part of the month. They're really emphasizing that part. And normally with I Ching, it's like the entire month is the whole thing. But this time for Earth, they're definitely, they as in <laughs> my guides bringing the information in, are saying the first part of the month is going to be a time of this is not work in the outside world. This is a time for rest, recovery, rejuvenation. You've been You've been doing all the hard work, you've been doing all the things, and now it's time to just rest. Allow the mud to settle in the well. Once it's settled, clear out what shows up. And it's weird when you take the time to be quiet, to be still. Not worry about things, not work on things. Just take the time for stillness. When you do that, all of a sudden you can see that thing that has been bugging you, that part that's just not there, that thing that you're just like, oh, I can't quite grasp it. All of a sudden it floats to the surface and you're like, there you are. <laughs> and then you can work through it, sort things out. And once you've gotten that done, that's that tiling the well part. That's putting in the work. And after that, things clear up for you. By the end of this month, they're saying that if you put the work in at the beginning, and that's the key, is if you put the work in in the beginning, and your work, and this is the best part about this earth, your work is to do nothing. <laughs> to find stillness, to find balance, to find that quiet place within and allow the universe to show you or allow your soul to show you, your guides to show you, this is what is subconsciously catching you. It doesn't mean you're going to solve it all at one time. Probably not. I mean, you might. Never know. <laughs> but once you put an awareness to the thing that is bothering you, the thing that is in the way, it tends to weaken its hold over you. So just some things to think about with the I Ching. Uh, moving into our tarot reading, um, I read for the first part of the week, the middle of the week, or not. <laughs> I read for a guide or guardian, um, a lesson from the tarot or a challenge from the tarot, and then a message from source, which is a positive affirmation usually. And there are approximately four weeks and two days in September. We'll go ahead and read a fifth week. So we'll do five solid weeks, gives you a little bonus at the end of the month. Um, and when we talk about a guide or a guardian, this is some uh, energy or entity that comes in to support you, protect you, or helps help you through the week, however that manifests for you. The message from source is a positive affirmation or some kind of support directly from the heart of the creator. And then the lesson or challenge from the tarot is something that you can work on, a lesson that's coming forward just as a like, kind of reminder. Sometimes it's a check-in type thing. Or it could be giving you a heads up for a challenge that 
you may not be expecting that week. So, <laughs> and I read first, second, third, fourth, fifth week, but the universe has a sense of humor, so it might be a completely different pattern for you. So, <laughs> we'll get started here with the first guide or guardian is the Illuminari. And with some of this deck, I may check in the book to see what it says, but with the Illuminari, it's pretty self-explanatory. This dragon is here to reveal, it's to illuminate, it's to show you the path that you're on. And with what the I Ching has said, this first week of September is a good time to find stillness, find quiet, allow your mind to rest, allow your body to rest, and allow what needs to be brought forward to be illuminated. The Illuminary Dragons are very powerful in the fact that they come in to reveal. They're like, it can be either a sun or a moon, depending on the energy that you're more comfortable with, but it's coming in and shining a light on the situation, which is allowing you to see it more clearly. So let's see what your message from source is. And these, the Illuminary Dragons, they wanted me to remind you, or to bring forward, they're reminding me, they are very gentle. They're not going to bring something forward that's abrasive or caustic. They're not going to be ruthless or mean about it. It's more, this is what we're seeing. How are we going to work with this? So they're very gentle in how they come across. Your message from source is confrontation. Pick your battles wisely. Just because you feel something might be, this, this is where my problem lies. This is saying, is it the right time to go after that? Things may, you may have the experience of multiple things being illuminated. Confrontation in this aspect is saying, use your tools, your gifts, your skills carefully. Not everything that pops up needs to be dealt with in that moment. Go with the flow of what is, what is going to be the most important in this moment, but not to cause a lot of trauma. They're saying this month of September is not about um, dramatic effects. They're saying it's not about how intense can I make my lessons. It's about the universe coming and saying, you've done a lot. Take a breath. There's something that's not quite clear yet. Allow it to come to the surface and process that through. They're really wanting you to pick your battles in that. Don't go after the hardest one. It's not necessary this month, Earth. It's definitely a gentle month for you. Your lesson or challenge is the Knight of Pentacles, so it's right up Earth's alley here. And with this particular knight, there's not a lot of action. There's movement, but it's not hyper, and that's what they're saying. Use your wisdom, and this is a lesson card is what I'm hearing. Use your wisdom. Use your tools. Pick the thing and address it appropriately. This is not a time for hyper conflict. This is not a time for beating yourself up. What's the, what's the point of that anyway? That doesn't benefit you. You're bringing it up saying, oh, okay, this is what's maybe not working for me. How can I fix this? What can I learn from this situation? And that's what this first week is really bringing forward is be gentle with yourself and allow source guides, guardians, angels to bring forth the information. And when it does, what can I learn from this and how can I mitigate it? It's all about gentility this first week. Your second week's guide or guardian is number 30 with the Delphin Dragons. And this one is not, I'm not as familiar with. So give me one second here. Because sometimes I have to check with the book because my intuition doesn't always kick over the way I'd like it to. <laughs> uh, there we go. Nope, that is not the right one. Where did he go? Do, 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 do. I know, doing these like this. Okay, so our dolphin dragon is the etheric counterpart of whales and dolphins. The whales are Earth's record keepers and the dolphins are the spiritual ancestors. They carry the blueprint of our spiritual existence here on Earth. The wise old dragons of the deep carry the same knowledge and understanding within the depths of their being. So this particular dragon works very closely with our seafaring cousins. And with that, this is where that you're going in, you're going into the depths. The first week, just like with the I Ching, you're finding that quiet time, you're finding that stability and quietness. The second week, 
even in that quietness, there's activity going on. With like the I Ching would talk about the perch were still going and you know, you're starting to do the work. This week is about, okay, the first week showed you what it was. The second week, we're bringing it to the surface. We're actually using our grounding abilities because Earth is really good at that. And you're uh, analyzing what it is and how can you grow from this? It's not, oh, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did this. That's not what they're saying. And they want you to banish that kind of nonsense from your brain anyway. They're wanting to say in these situations, okay, this happened. This is what's going on. What can I learn? There's still movement, and this is where the act active part of you've done the quiet part, it's come to the surface, now it's time to do the work of sorting that out. Um, your second week's guide, uh, less message from source, if I could talk, is Archangel Raphael, provider of healing for mind, body, and spirit. Could not pick that one any better if I tried. Archangel Raphael is, oddly enough, the energy of air in the east but just as with a little picture over here in the corner this little guy here green archangel raphael works with yellows golds and greens as the colors and with archangel raphael take the time to let your body heal take the time to absorb the lessons that are coming forward nothing is a being forced this this first part of the month nothing is being rushed this is a time of reflection reevaluation if that's necessary and quietly moving forward this first part of this month is really about understanding some things just happen for sometimes you don't even understand the reason in the beginning but the second week now that the what's come forward is there how can you work through it how can you learn from this and by bringing a light to the subject, it allows you to see the threads that would untangle it from your energy so you can release it better. And Archangel Raphael, being a divine surgeon, is actually a really good one to help sort through, release, and take out the problems. So good angel to work with for the second week. Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the four of swords swords is your opposite so this is an air energy uh, and it's they're saying don't beat yourself up over things the four of swords in this aspect especially in this particular deck is saying things may not have gone the way you wanted them to things may have almost blown up in your face at times in the past you're carrying a guilt burden with you that is unnecessary and that's part of what you're releasing this month is okay i've we've all screwed up in the past and in this what they're saying with this one is though yes things have happened in the past why are you carrying that with you is everyone else resolved from the situation is it look like everything is better and yet you're still holding on to this little aspect of it there's no shame in release there's no shame in forgiveness and I'm not saying forgive the other person. That's important. They're wanting to emphasize, forgive yourself. It's a mistake. Take the time to learn from it. And did you, because you, you did learn from it no matter what. And the what they're saying is, is if you learned from it and you're moving better and you're getting into a better position from it, you've, you've accepted the lesson, release the guilt. There's no more reason for that. So. It's a little interesting, the energy they're com that's coming in for Earth this uh, month. Your third week's guide or guardian is number 25, the philosopher. Philosophy is kind of an odd hobby or habit, if you will. The philosopher dragon is saying, let's, let's look at what happened, what can we learn from it, and then how can we apply those lessons further. But you also, with philosophy and the philosopher is why was this bothering me? You're not looking at it from the surface level anymore. You're actually getting deeper. And then once you get into that deeper state, you're able to tile your well. You're setting yourself up for success in the future because now that you've cleaned everything up, that's what the first couple weeks were for. This third week is not so much analyzing, but okay, I've learned the lesson. How can I mitigate that in the future so it doesn't keep showing back up? Lessons repeat because we haven't learned them. The philosopher saying, 
learn it, embed it, move forward. And that's what the Philosopher Dragon is coming forward is it's things that are in the past, that's how we learn and that's how we grow. Allow that, the chink in your armor, to become a badge of honor. Allow those hiccups from the past to actually help you grow in the future. And funny thing about mistakes, when you learn from them and you process the lesson fully, release the guilt and the for, and forgive everything involved, suddenly you can help others who are dealing with the same situation. And that's the other aspect of the philosopher is the philosopher is a deep thinker, but he's also, he or she, is a teacher. So don't forget that part of it. Uh, you have your message from source is the seven deadly sins, humanity's destructive traits, guilt, shame, fear. These are all things that are very destructive. Now, fear does have a concept, an aspect of self-preservation, which is important, but guilt and shame really don't have a purpose outside of correcting a pattern. And source wants you to understand that what you're working through is you're seeing that there's this pattern you or lesson or challenge you're analyzing it and by this point in the third week you're coming to an understanding that it was a learning opportunity when you shift it from guilt shame misery uh, why did i do this i can't believe i was so fill in the blank um, adjective to yes that happened i learned this from it going forward i'm doing this I forgive myself and I forgive all parties involved. I take the lesson into myself to help me become a better person, but I release the guilt and the shame. That's what they're wanting you to bring forward. And again, these messages are for a general reading, so take what works. And with the seven deadly sins concept, it could be the fact that there's something that you feel you have sinned so greatly for in the past. And Source wants you to understand everything is forgivable everything can be worked through as long as you learn the lesson and don't repeat the pattern so let's take a peek at your third week's tarot message lesson or challenge here we have number four the emperor so the emperor is coming forward as and this is a major arcana so this is applies to more than just this week this is the divine masculine energy. The divine masculine is pushing forward. There is a projective energy. You could Some people would call it aggressive. Aggressive is not always bad, by the way. And with this energy going forward, the lesson here is you can make a mistake. Understanding the mistake, learning from it, and pushing forward is the important part. This third week is, the first two weeks were figuring it out, sorting through it. This third week is pushing forward. You've done the work, and this is a lesson primarily that they're saying. Now it's time to move on. Don't wallow in it. You have tiled your well. You've cleaned things up. Why would you put mud back in the well you just cleaned? Don't do that. And that's the divine masculine energy is you've done the lesson. You've learned the thing. Move on. And that is, they're being really adamant, move on. <laughs> so this third week is definitely, by the end of it, you sh they're saying that this is a good time to just accept the fact of what happened. It's fine. You learned your lesson. Move forward. Don't dwell in the past. So your th fourth week's guide or guardian is number 33, and it is the Hearn Dragon. And this one, I've got a couple of different thoughts going through my head, one of which is this is definitely about reconnecting with Gaia, reconnecting and regrounding, which is really important for Earth anyway. But let's see what the author of this, oops, not that one, uh, the author of this deck says. There we are. Um, I'm also feeling a little bit of wild in nature, so definitely getting outside, doing your th uh, things outside. So the Earth Dragon Hearn, could not be more appropriate your earth here uh, <laughs> is connected to nature and everything within the natural world the rocks the earth the trees the plants the animals the birds he advises us that we would do well to remember that we are part of all seasons the earth's rotation and of mother earth herself gaia he reminds us that everything is cyclical and draws our attention to how out of sync we are with the earth's rhythms 
and our internal body clocks are as well out of kilter. We couldn't imagine life without our smartphones and all of our technology, which is good but not always necessary. These things can be very powerful distractions. There's, And it's not helping us grow. It's keeping us from self-reflection. In this aspect, Hearn is coming forward to help us. You've done the work. You've started processing. You're moving forward. Hearn is saying everything happens for a reason. Everything happens in patterns and cycles. But understanding that that is a thing helps us know that there's going to be ups in life, there's going to be downs in life. The downs don't stay down, the ups are not permanent. It's that wheel of uh, the tarot aspect where you're just constantly ups and downs and ups and downs. Hearn is saying tap back into the cycles. September, especially in the northern hemisphere, we're slowing down. We're going into our second harvest with Maybon coming up this month. And then you're stepping into the quiet aspects of winter. In the southern hemisphere, you're, you're, you're doing the opposite. You're gearing up for summer. But with those quiet times, it's a great time to start the self-reflection, to start the inner work, to start preparing for the future. It doesn't have to be fast. It doesn't have to be aggressive. But definitely head down that path of figuring out what needs to happen and then go forward with it. And that's the energy that Hearn is bringing forward with this uh, particular energy. So your message from source is dreams. Believe in your dreams. Keep a dream journal. I talk about these a lot. Just get a notebook, decorate it however you want, and keep it next to your bed. First thing in the morning, put pen to paper. Like you sit up out of bed before you go to the coffee or any of the other morning <laughs> absolutions that need to occur. Pen to paper, just whatever comes forward, write it down. It may be gibberish. It might be a dream that you are needing. Source is saying... When you consciously set yourself up to receive information from the subconscious in a dream state, you might be surprised what comes through. You might write what looks like gibberish first thing in the morning and read it two days later and go, that was the most amazing thing I've ever read. <laughs> or it could still be gibberish. But writing it down and getting those things on paper first thing in the morning, source your angels, your guides, your guardians bring through some of the most amazing things at the most random times. But it's also saying, don't give up on the things that you've wanted. Your dreams, your goals, your hopes, your dreams, these are important just to keep us going, if nothing else. But with Hearn coming forward, as well as this dreams, they're really talking right now with the subconscious. So it's messages coming through, messages that um, God, Source, Divine wants to bring in, your guides want to bring in, and keeping that journal next to your bed. And like I said, make it special. Decorate that thing up, put flowers on it, put feathers on it, press it down, do a resin cover if you like that. Make it yours. Connect your art, your skill, and your talent to it so that it's special. Those dream journals are valuable tools for self-discovery and self-awareness. So work along those lines. They're, they're amazing. I have journals all over the place, but my dream journals are my most fun especially when you write down your dreams and you're going, what was I doing? <laughs> because there's things that your subconscious processes and the way they do it sometimes is uh, amazing is a good term. <laughs> your lesson or challenge from the tarot, we're still with the major arcana, interestingly enough. It's number 11. 11. <laughs> Not good with Roman numerals. And it's the strength card. Strength is conquering yourself. You have the strength of personality. You have the strength of will. You have the strength from everything around you because you might just be seeing me on the screen here, but let me be very frank. There's a whole bunch are surrounding me, supporting me as I do this. And when you look in the mirror, you might just see your face. Do not doubt for one second. You have what we can call an army surrounding you. You have guardian angels, you have guides, you have um, divine wings of some form. You have animal guides. They're, you're surrounded all the time. You're never really alone, which is good and bad. But with the strength card, what it's saying is you have all the strength you need. This is calling you to remember that you carry that strength. To remember you've made it this far. Whether you're 20 or 75, look at how strong you have been through those times. 
you've got this. You are not in a bad place. By the end of the month, things are going to improve. The I Ching talks about by the end of it, you're in a way better place than how the month started, and the tarot is actually agreeing with that. It's also giving you a little bit of tools and some ideas to process things a little bit differently and maybe move forward in a more um, balanced way. They kept showing me scales. I was like, words, not pictures. <laughs> so your fifth week, this can be classified as a bonus week of September, is number 29, Soul Guardian. These are the dragons that come forward to help you feel protected, to help you feel safe, to help you feel comfortable, but also to protect you as you move forward. These dragons are coming and they are coming in with a big reminder. You've already done so much, especially this month, Earth. It's not going to seem like you're doing a lot. By the end of the month, you're going to feel the improvements is what I'm hearing. And the Soul Guardian has come in just to be like, Put its big dragon wing around your shoulder, being like, see, I knew you could do it. You doubted yourself at times. That's fine. We all do. But look at how far you've come in just this month. There's a lot of movement that is occurring. They're saying it's going to be subtle, so a lot of subconscious stuff. But by the end of the month, you're going to be in a better position. You're going to feel better. You might even be financially better. You might have proposed to that person you were you've been dating for a while and they said yes there's a lot of things moving forward here that are saying the positivity is definitely going to be on the upswing by the end of the month the first part is just take the time you've done a lot of work already recover kind of rejuvenate yourself and then start up again <laughs> your message from source for this bonus fifth week of september is up to yeah, <laughs> excuse me. Opportunity knocks. Go for it. That ties into your soul guardian. You've done all the things. You set yourself up. When the opportunities come forward, going going forward for you, it is definitely a good time to just accept the the opportunities. Um, <laughs> okay, so source is really the, my guides are being very entertaining right now they're like look there's opportunities within opportunities within opportunities there's more opportunities surrounding and this is you earth which one are you going to pick you have a lot of things available by the end of this month the opportunities are going to be there you're going to see multiple pathways forward and your intuition is going to be helping guide you the soul guardians are going to kind of keep the things that are probably not the best options a further way or at least guide you away from them if you do happen to look towards them so this little last period of september here is definitely on the upswing by the end of the month and your last week's uh, lesson or challenge is the eight of wands We've got some fire energy there's a little bit of passion you might be nervous i mean you can check out her face she looks well if my camera would focus no nope. okay she looks a little nervous, but she's still out there chasing those opportunities. The Eight of Wands in with this imagery is saying everything is going to be improved. You might still feel a little bit unstable. You might feel a little bit nervous, but your drive, that passion, the thing that keeps you going, that spark that lights you up, that thing that makes you for Earth so unique and so powerful and like a little magnet you draw people to you that is not going to go away it might have felt dimmed at the first of the month by the end of the month you're you're perking back up things are coming back into alignment for you so as you go through this month of september take the time when you feel called to to rest take the time for stillness shut your phone off meditate go sit by a stream especially listening to the water run that is so soothing take a bath especially with epsom salts those are amazing um, ground yourself carry some obsidian with you to help just kind of keep yourself more balanced but as you go through this month be aware that you're doing great everything is moving the right way it may not feel that way at the beginning but by the end of the month you're going to be in a much better state mentally physically financially it could be all of the above or just one of those but look for the improvements strive for them and keep your chin up things are gonna things are getting better the first part's not gonna be 
great. But by the end of the month, things are going to get better. Um, with that, I will let you guys go. I hope you have an awesome month of September. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, drop a like on the video, comment. Let me know what your thoughts, feelings, opinions, and ideas are, and I will talk to you later. Have a great month, everyone.